Good morning, Pastor Ron Jetter, Emmanuel Lutheran Church, Grandview, Washington. If it's Tuesday, this must be Belgium. Remember that title? It was a, a movie back in the 60s during the age when people were beginning to fly internationally and take these 17-day European see every country trips and someone then finally made a, a movie about it to to parody the situation that after a while when you've been into one too many countries all you can do is look at your itinerary and that's where they came up with the title if it's Tuesday oh it must be Belgium if this is Belgium it must be Tuesday well it's Tuesday so this must be the sanctuary of Emmanuel Lutheran Church and you can probably hear a little bit more echo than when I'm in my basement studio Today's my travel day. It's the day I like to get out, come here. There's a couple of guys uh, showed up today. We cannot do any work here at the church, though, because it rained and rained and rained. One of them said we got a third of an inch over the night, which is a lot for a single storm for us. We usually get trace or maybe a, a, a 20th of an inch, but for a third of an inch, that's that's a lot of water, and it's coming in May rather than in June. The cherries aren't ripe yet, but then again, most of the cherries froze, at least in this part of our valley. Um, as one person here said, he is about 60 cherries to a tree or less, and it takes 60 cherries to make a pound. So if you have an orchard, well, that's, that's a lot of work picking one tree to get less than a pound. Uh, that's... That's farming. We live by nature, as COVID-19 reminds us. We, we are sometimes at the mercy of nature. Speaking of traveling, today the disciples are traveling around, and Philip, whom we've been following in the eighth chapter of the book of Acts, has gone to Samaria, and John and Peter had to then come there, as we heard yesterday, but today then Philip goes on, he heads down then toward Gaza, which is on the Mediterranean. And as he's traveling this road, he comes across uh, a, a court official, uh, the Ethiopian eunuch is what the story is called, this, uh, the personal guard of the queen of the Ethiopians. Uh, who was in charge of the treasury, so a very trusted official. He had come to Jerusalem to worship, it says, in uh, chapter 8, verses 26 and following. Why would he come to Jerusalem to worship? Uh, was he, he wasn't a Jew, he was an Ethiopian. Uh, ethnically, he was, was different then. He would have been African, not Mediterranean. But he was a God-fearer and was interested in knowing more about God. So that's one part of this story, is that here is someone who has somehow decided that he needs to deepen his relationship with God. And now we find this curious note. How does God communicate then with Philip to tell Philip, Here's someone you need to pay attention to. Here's a good candidate for conversion. We as Lutherans don't tend to think that way. We don't look around at other people and go, whom, who can I tell the gospel to? We look around them and say, who needs casserole? Okay, can I knit you a scarf? Yeah, okay. You need some jello? But to say, let me tell you about this person about whom you are curious. Well, yesterday we heard how Paul spoke to the people about this, or actually it was on Sunday. Paul spoke to the people about the unknown God to whom uh, a statue had been erected in, in Athens. And now here's Philip on the road to the Mediterranean toward Gaza and meets this Ethiopian. But it says in verse 26, then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Okay, so an angel of the Lord. It didn't say the angel appeared to Philip. It said the angel said to Philip. Verse 29, Philip sees 
this person who was in a chariot coming back from Jerusalem. Verse 29, the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard the man, the court official, reading the prophet Isaiah. Philip said, do you understand what you're reading? The man said, how can I understand unless someone guides me? He invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Philip then does that. Uh, verse 34, the eunuch asks Philip, about whom, may I ask, does the prophet say this, about himself or someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? And that's really the key to this story. Well, there's two. One is, how does God communicate to Philip? One says an angel of the Lord, one says the Spirit of the Lord. How does God communicate to us? We have scriptures. Philip did not. He had, he had the, uh, the prophets and the law, but uh, the New Testament, of course, wouldn't be written for some time. But Philip understands the scriptures enough, the Jewish scriptures, to say they all point to this person whom the Jews call the Messiah, and we call him Jesus, or in Greek, the Christ. And he died, rose again, and Philip shared the whole story of the good news, and the Ethiopian official responded by saying, I desire to be baptized. Here's water. It says they came upon some water. Now keep in mind, uh, it says back in verse 26, that's a wilderness road. The road from Jerusalem winding down through the wilderness, through that dry uh, land of Israel, down to the Mediterranean. Some water, a puddle, a pond, a stream, we don't know what kind of water. Um, and again, as we, we've heard before, it doesn't matter how much water, a teaspoon, God's Spirit won't be limited by the circumstances. God's Spirit will honor the desire of the heart. And the Ethiopian official wanted to be baptized and said, look, here's water. What's to prevent me from being baptized? He didn't say, I desire to be baptized. He says, what's to prevent me from being baptized? Why is that so important? because what he's doing is challenging the gospel itself. As if to say to Philip, so what kinds of rules are there? What kinds of qualifications are there? What kind of limitations? What excuses can you put in the way to stop me from being baptized? Or can I take you at your word and baptism is available to me, a stranger, a non-Jew, an African, because I have heard you proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and I want to be baptized. Now we've got to go on. Philip and the eunuch went down to the water and Philip baptized him. That simple. Philip baptized him. What is to prevent me, prevent me from being baptized? Philip assumes it's a rhetorical question. You're right. Let's do it. <laughs> That's the right answer. That's the gospel. And the church has so often through its 2,000 year history gotten it wrong. The church has too often said, well, you haven't had pre-baptismal instruction. Well, you're, um, I don't know. We need sponsors. We're going to have to set a calendar date. You're going to have to go through a class. Let's see. We need, we need, we need to do this. We've got to have a pool built so that you can be completely immersed in it. It's got to be done correctly. It has to be done on a Sunday. Uh, any number of reasons. Communion, no less is surrounded by all sorts of rules. And one of the things we were dealing with at the early stages of our COVID-19 response was, 
how do we do communion? We're now in our separate homes. And I have to say thank you to our bishop and the other bishops who got it when pastors like me said to her, remember the Ethiopian eunuch's question, what is to prevent us from sharing the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ? And at first her response was, Wow, we don't want to make sure, don't want anybody to be excluded. And how do we make sure that we provide for good order? And, and finally she said, you're right. We have to do communion because we have to trust Jesus at his word. He said, this is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. And it works. We are communing on Sunday. We haven't had any baptisms, but if we did, we'd figure out how to do that too. God's Spirit won't be thwarted because we aren't meeting together in this space. We will be here, in here. Imagine us back in here together while still having a way to involve the people who are staying at home for a little longer. We have to do both and. What is to prevent us from worshiping God in here and in our homes? Both and. We'll find a way. The Spirit will give us the way. I don't know if the Lord will talk to us the way the Lord talked to Philip. I think that's kind of, kind of rare, and it was for that time a very special time. God talks to us through different ways. But I do look forward to us being in this space again together. Until then, though, we are still the church by the same Spirit that prompted the Ethiopian to say, what is to prevent me from being baptized? See you tomorrow.